Redemption rights. We're discussing the difference between common stock and preferred stock. Uh, preferred stock has preferences that common stock does not. That's why it's called preferred. Uh, they have a bunch of things that they can do or that they get that common stock shareholders do not. This is a big list of some of those preferences. Um, right now we're talking about something called redemption rights. Uh, redemption rights essentially mean that as an investor, I can go back to the company and say, hey, I want my money back. I get my money back. Uh, I may have put $5 million into the company. I want my $5 million back. Uh, it, it's written supposedly so that if the company's not doing something that you want it to do or you're massively unhappy with it, that you can get your money back out of the company. Generally, you don't, they don't just cut you a check for $5 million. It's a, a scheduled, you know, kind of over time release of money slowly so that it doesn't kill the company or drown the company. But uh, essentially, you can just say, hey, I, I don't like being an investor anymore. I want my money back. And there's a threshold associated with this most times, meaning that you have to get some high percentage of the preferred stock shareholders to vote to allow someone to exercise their redemption right. So if, before we start talking about uh, when you might do this, let, let's look at a company favorable and investor favorable situation. So a company favorable situation would be there is no redemption right, that the preferred stock shareholders can't do this. Uh, that way the company doesn't have to worry about this happening. An investor favorable situation would be a multiple, would be not only do I get my money back, I get three times my money back or two times my money back. Uh, and then of course there's a bunch of options in between those two. Uh, so let's look at, you know, redemption rights almost, they very rarely get used or exercised. And if you start to look at uh, three simple situations a company might face, you understand why. The first is, let's say the company's doing crappy. If the company's doing crappy, they probably have no cash, they're probably in the toilet. Uh, they, therefore, they can't pay uh, the redemption right even if you ask for it. And frankly, it might kill the company outright if you decided to redeem. So very rarely will the redemption right get used in this situation because it's a little bit like putting a bullet in, into the head of the company. Uh, let's say the company's uh, killing it. Let's say they're, they're doing great. They're uh, at tons of revenue. They're growing really quickly. In this case, you, you don't want to redeem your redemption rights. In fact, you want equity. You want to keep your equity in the company because ostensibly you're going to sell that company for a lot of money and your equity is going to be worth more than your investment. So you don't want to re redeem uh, or exercise your redemption right. It's when you get into break even where this becomes a little interesting. Uh, break even, let's say you're break even, you're, you're barely making a profit and you're not growing that quickly. A redemption right, uh, threatening to, to exercise a redemption right as a preferred investor sometimes uh, can give you leverage over the company. So if the company's not growing the way you like or not being as aggressive as you like, you can say, hey, if you guys don't do X, Y, Z, I'm going to exercise my redemption rights. Uh, and that's one of the few situations where a, a, an investor might uh, prefer to actually exercise that right. Uh, it's not often that you see it done uh, because, you know, like I said, a crappy situation might kill them. If you're killing it, your equity is worth more.